If you had to fight 15 sheep, what strategy would you use? I'll let you finish your Tic Tacs. (laughs) You got a little time to think about it, you know? I got 15 sheep. They're angry. They're looking at me. I'm by myself in a field with nothing but my clothes and my cell phone. Hey, girl, you trying to hit this? Oh, you know exactly what I need. (laughs) Oh, it's a beautiful day. It's kind of cold and rainy. There's a monsoon (laughs) outside. Will we survive? I hope not. (laughs) Take (laughs) us. Take us, the storm. (laughs) I'm mentally ill. (laughs) And I'm ready to go out in a flood of water. Do we make TikToks in the rain? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited for that. I've been wanting to do that for ages. Okay, maybe we do that. I am fucking crazy, but I am free. I am free. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Well, it's a beautiful shitty Tuesday (laughs) uh, at the Two Girls, One Blunt Podcast studio. And by studio, we mean our apartment. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we actually took away, for anyone watching, the green screen. We're trying to make this a lot easier on ourselves. And uh, we're going to... Oh, I just burped. Yeah. Oh, my God. That smells like the fucking eggs I ate. I'm going to back up. Oh, I had hard-boiled eggs. I don't know why. I was like, I need protein. (laughs) And I'm going to regret that later because we're hanging out with guys. And I'm going to definitely have to fart. And I don't fart. But if I eat hard-boiled eggs, I might have to fart. Oh, is it just Ray coming over or is it... I think it's just Ray. Oh, okay. Maybe. You never know. You never know with boys. (laughs) They might always try to bring a friend. But uh, yeah, we're going to get a big neon sign behind us. We're going to decorate all of this. We're getting new furniture. We're going to make the studio different. And so this might just be a little bit easier for a setup. It didn't take as long today. No, it was super easy. Guys, we're not smoking this episode. (laughs) We're taking a tolerance break. I also feel like in terms of comedy and coming up with actually like funny punchlines and exercising that part of my brain. I can't do it high. You know, not everyone can, you know, not everyone can. So I feel like it'll make us funnier when we do smoke because like our brains will be working like more fast and sharp because we've taken a break. (laughs) Whereas like, I think that my brain needs a break after the two years of craziness and damage I've done to my lungs. Yeah. No, I just realized the other day I've been smoking for six years Wow. Which is you drug addict. Like a quarter of my life. That's 25% of my life that I've spent smoking. That's a lot. Damn. Here's to 50%. <laughs> I've only, I started smoking like 20 or 18, 19, really smoking at 21. And now I'm 28. It's so like seven years. Wait, so you've been six years? Yeah. When I turned 18. Shit. Shit. <laughs> when we say like <laughs> this was 10 years ago, that makes me feel disgusting. I feel like 10 years ago was still the 90s. Yeah. For me, I wasn't even alive in the 90s, barely. <laughs> you were like, like two. <laughs> but what? 50 years ago was the 70s. That that doesn't even make sense. No, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> History is wrong, is what I have to say. Time about that. isn't real. No. (laughs) (laughs) Who are we? (laughs) Um, I think we asked that question once a podcast episode. You know what? And this one, we'll we'll start doing it twice a podcast episode. The end of the episode, we'll be like, who are we? (laughs) And you, the viewers, have to tell us because we don't know. (laughs) Because we may be on the spectrum. (laughs) We also talk about that once an episode. (sighs) Uh, So, you know, we repeat ourselves sober or stoned just get used to it if you don't like it you can leave do you consider like smoking weed to be a drug addict because i know that we had a friend who was dating a man he was like an older man and every time that we all smoked weed together (laughs) he would be like oh you you do drugs and you french you drug addict i don't know what he was is he french he's french yeah okay you do drugs. You do drugs. <laughs> that, was, that was a terrible Wee oui, oui. <laughs> What is that, Italian? Are you a Mario <laughs> Frenchman? <laughs> and he's like, listen. Oh, wait, that is it. 
What's French? Je m'opère, je mets. You do drugs. You do drugs. Why do you do drugs, my love? <laughs> you do drugs. Drugs rot your brain. You're already blonde. Yeah, but he would basically call us all little drug addicts. Because oh. we would get high. Like, you have to get high before everything you do. <laughs> What about it? What about it? I'm not going to stop. No. And then I, but then you think about it and you're like, I actually have to get high before everything I do. Yeah. So, okay. My friend was talking in the college group chat and she was like, oh, I'm friends with this alcoholic. And like, she goes out every day and she starts drinking before 11 and going off about like how unhealthy her life choices were. And she was like, we go out to eat for brunch and she has to get a drink. And I'm like, wow, that sounds really unhealthy. Maybe she should stop doing that. And I was like, and I was like, wait a second. Wait a fucking second. Cause I do that. I smoke at 7 a.m. 5 a.m. I don't give a fuck. If I'm 2 a.m. If I'm conscious, I'm smoking weed. I've been outside the DMV smoking a bowl <laughs> in my car. I smoked weed with a cop in Miami. Yeah. So <sighs> I've smoked weed on the side of the street. I've smoked weed on the corner. <laughs> and I'll do it again. Bop, bop. I've hid smoking weed from people I love. <laughs> <laughs> I've smoked weed during sex because... I wanted to. While you're fucking. While we're fucking, yeah. I've yeah. smoked before sex, while I'm fucking, and after. That sounds like a great sex session. Yeah. But all of that to say, weed is very similar to other drugs. I know everyone says it's a gateway, and I think that is like propaganda. But if you are abusing it and you're noting, noticing yourself where it's a problem and you're doing it all of the time and you have to do it all the time... Maybe it is affecting you just like any other drug or alcohol or anything could be. (laughs) I noticed it was affecting me. My brain, like, oh, I'll be not smoking. I've been trying not to smoke like first thing in the morning or I'll smoke like as I'm getting ready. Cause like, if I'm just chilling and I don't need to use my brain, fine. But I noticed that it definitely has a direct effect on how productive I am. Like if I'm tired or not. And so like lately- We've been smoking and every time we smoke is when I feel like just hit by a bus and I'm like, oh, I thought I was just like sick or I was having like, like migraines and I'm like, oh no, once I stop smoking as much, well, and by not as much, I literally mean like not 20 blunts a day. I'm still smoking (laughs) a significant amount, (laughs) especially with bong and like taking time bombs. But I noticed it was the exact same symptoms and I was like, fuck, it is the weed. It's making me dumb. It's the weed. I mean, I don't know if my brain is any sharper on this podcast now, even though we haven't smoked. (laughs) I think you said something like two minutes in and you were like, we're going to be more smarter with no weed. And I was like, are we, are we going to be more smarter? (laughs) More smarter. (laughs) Starting off strong. (laughs) Well, I actually have a, I have a great first, first topic. Okay. You know, kind of like a, it was an abrupt segue, but you know what? It's going to be good. So you know how Urban Dictionary was like the thing in like elementary and middle school. Like you would go to look up all slang or like what you, sex shit was. You don't. You It's still not the thing. Oh, no. I use Urban Dictionary quite often. I, herb, I go, I search a word and I search Urban Dictionary. Well, now I just search TikTok. Yeah, but that doesn't, that's not going to give you like the raw, real (laughs) definition. And they give you words and use this in a sentence. No, I still use urban. I'm just talking about like, it was like a big thing when we were kids. Yeah, it was. It was like a big thing. But I looked up the craziest sex acts and there is an article about it. And I just wanted to look at the article and look at the sex acts and, you know, (sighs) see what we think about it. I didn't even know we were doing this. (laughs) So this is the top 25 dirtiest sex acts from Urban Dictionary. Urban oh. Dictionary? This is about to get real freaky. I haven't even looked at it. So oh, you like, haven't even read it? What no. if it sucks? <laughs> well, I skimmed it enough to know it doesn't. Okay. But, you know? All right. Starting off with number one, the Mississippi birdbath. Well, wait. Okay. We have to guess them. Yeah, yeah. If you had to guess what a Mississippi birdbath is, what would you think it is? <laughs> A Mississippi <laughs> bird bath is when you like hop in the shower and you like quickly, or maybe you like use the running water from the sink and you just quickly like clean yourself up before you fuck. A whore's bath. Okay. That's what I've always called it. Yeah. Okay. For me, it's a, it's a sex act. Oh. Remember? Well, that's, that's a part of the process. <laughs> okay. All right. The beginning, the foreplay, to yeah, the, the sex f- act. I feel like what I think a Mississippi bird bath would be is you're fucking in a barn 
and then you get dust on you and you just like wiggle around, keep going and you come. <laughs> and you come. <laughs> come right in that barn. Okay, let's see what it is. I don't know. <laughs> it's filling a southern girl's mouth with Kool-Aid, making her get on her knees with her mouth open while you dip your balls in it. My balls are, were super hot last night, so my girl let me give them a Mississippi bird bath. <laughs> That gives teabagging a whole new level. Kool Aid. Kool Aid. She has like a red mouth and she's like, ah, the Kool Aid would just drip everywhere and stain you. See, that's my next question. What color would you go for? I would go for blue because then you give them blue <laughs> balls and it's just like, it's poetic. That is poetic. Do you like, can you stick two balls in your mouth? I've done it. Well, <laughs> some people have small balls. So, oh. like the big boys, like a bird bath, I'd have to like, <laughs> one at a time <laughs> you I do, just the water inside your mouth while they dip it I would throw up on his penis yeah I think it would burst out laughing who does that with a serious fucking face how could you is it I don't know if Urban is right has anybody can actually a, done can this can I give my titty a Mississippi bird bath yeah I got some watermelon juice so we can keep it a no, actually, the last time I rubbed fruit on my titties, I got a large reaction. <laughs> Are you allergic to Kool-Aid? I might. I, I might. guess we're going to find out later. Okay, what's the next one? All right, your turn. <laughs> okay. That's the name of it. I fucking, I, I creeped a, a word, so I'm going to fuck up, but flying circus. Oh, this has to involve a lot of people. This isn't just two people, right? <laughs> this is a gang bang. <laughs> this is an orgy. This is a girl who is <laughs> hanging from one of the rings at a circus, but her legs are also in other rings, and then men fuck her. Okay. And they spin her on top of him. Like, they uh, hold those circle rings, oh. and she's just rotating on the dick. I'm just picturing, like, her shoulders and arms being dislocated as they spin her on the penis. Oh, Okay, um, let's read Okay, it. wait, I have to guess. Oh. Okay, Flying Circus. I'm really just picturing, like, two guys. One of them's tossing the girl up in the air and then slamming her back down on the dick. And then, like, flipping her and then shoving his dick in her mouth. It's just, like, very acrobatic. Okay, we like the, ac we like the acrobats. The acrobats. <laughs> in bed. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in Mississippi. Okay, it's a sex act in which a woman is a reverse cowgirl on top of a man, and then they attempt to jump and throw her to another man standing by a wall. But knowns to her, the second man plans to sidestep and let her hit the wall and fall down, hopefully leaving her writh writhing? Writhing? Writhing in agony. So Then both men ejaculate on her. James found out his girlfriend was cheating on him. So we gave <laughs> we gave the bitch the flying circus. So this is revenge sex. This is you want to hurt the person. You don't want to have fun. These are fucked up. Who came up with these on? That was in 2006 by a terrible person. <laughs> Somebody who got cheated on who then tossed his girlfriend into a wall instead of fucking her. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. I hate anything with the word steamer. Oh, no. If you've heard of the Cleveland steamer, just wait. This is the, the Leningrad, Leningrad steamer. Okay, so the Cleveland steamer's on your chest. Where he takes a shit on your chest. Okay, so maybe the Leningrad steamer. Leningrad. What the fuck is that word? Leningrad? I have no clue. Should we get context clues? Are you searching Leningrad? Leningrad. <laughs> Leningrad. St. Petersburg? <laughs> I think Siege this was of a, Leningrad. a battle. Okay, so it's a military in Russia. Okay, so you <laughs> slap a girl in the face, knock her out, and then you shit in her mouth. Okay, all right. I'm just going with the Russia context clues. I feel like it has something to do with ice cubes. You put the ice cubes in your ass. You take a laxative. Shut that's, the fuck up, That's Emily. the battle. That's the siege. <laughs> the siege of your stomach. You shit into her pussy. That That's just seems like just something Russians would do. Sh pussy shit. And then you go fight a bear. Yeah. All right. Some vodka. What is this? Oh, God. This is bad. 
when one individual defecates upon another two individuals who are duct taped together, whoa, whilst, whilst the two individuals are naked engaging in penetrative intercourse, the defecating individual then proceeds to rub his or her face in the defecated material, orally licking it clean. In order oh, no. to apply, the defecation must contact the outer labia of the female reproductive anatomy and the urethra of the male reproductive system. You knew it had to do with pussy. I just felt it. They're it's trying to give them E. coli. In my bones. This is, this is a biohazard. This is bio, biological warfare. Oh my gosh. You know, we're the gonna, next step. <laughs> this is the I'm World War III right here. I'm the village with my deathly shits. <gasps> I'm actually shocked. <laughs> if I was the defecating individual personally, <laughs> I never would be. <laughs> I feel like with my life, I'd be the one getting shit on, you know? Um. <laughs> no, I totally picture you walking into a man's house and he's like, shit on me a thousand dollars. And you're like, well, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get the job done. I got to get the job done. How much would you, uh, how much would that cost? How much would that run me? What? For you to shit on me and make contact with my female reproductive. I don't know. I don't know. I have a weird, I have, a, I'm poo, I'm scared of pooping in front of people. I would get poop I'm conscious. N- I don't think I poop in front of people in general. I poop in public places because I view all of them as NPCs. When they come in the bathroom, they're not a real person. Yeah. <laughs> but like shitting on an actual individual I have to come in contact with, let alone just like shitting near them, on them. Whew. Whew. You know, I think I would have nervous shit. So then it would be even worse. Stop. And, and then, then I just like, explode. And it's like not all the way out. And you just, okay. You know next where it's like with the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. Bob sledding. Bob sledding. Now this sounds like something you Canadians brought up. Okay. It's, I, I feel like it has to do with a dick. <sighs> Cause it's long. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Bob sledding. You freeze your dick. You put your dick in the freezer and then you put it in, you rub it on their pussy and you freeze their clit. I don't know. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm with you. For me, I'm picturing bobsledding. You know a snail trail. Classic when your pussy juice just like makes a trail. Oh God. I'm picturing cum. You're using the cum as lube to slide her from one sexual partner to the other. It's a <laughs> you all come on a table. Yeah, you come on her back. She flips over, and then you push her down the floor to the next. She group just of gets bed. bong, bong, bong. Okay, let's, let's find out what it actually is. The act of laying the erect penis along the butt crack and essentially titty banging the butt cheeks. This t- takes place until ejaculation, resulting in a winter wonderland. That's if it? You, if you'd like to titty fuck her, but her boobs are too small, try bobsledding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like, you know, we've all done this. We've all been there. We've all bobsledded. That's not even that dirty. <laughs> I know. I was picturing I've definitely way had a butt. A uh, dick in between my ass cheeks like that. Who hasn't? Come on, let's like a Tuesday. This is yeah. Let's go. Oh God, I'm nervous. <laughs> Spicy Gringo. <laughs> Spicy Gringo is the name of the next one. That makes me very nervous because it leads me to believe that there is something to do with jalapenos near a pussy, and jalapenos and pussy. But gringo's white man. A white man. I don't know. Fuck. Hot, I'm thinking of Drake's hot sauce in the condoms. <sighs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he put hot sauce in a condom so that when she tried to put the cum back in her, it would burn. I'm picturing burning penis. Okay. A guy who fucks you with an STD, a spicy gringo. Ooh. And white men are known to bring diseases to foreign lands. Yeah. And this pussy needs to be explored, but Pers- not by a spicy gringo. No. Okay. <laughs> a clean one. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm picturing like she is the taco and you slide in. Then your urethra gets spicy Uh, and I don't want to spice. Have you ever actually ever ate like something hot or spicy and then somehow touched your pussy after like later in the day? No, because I learned from other people's mistakes. My (laughs) friend once did this. She made jalapeno poppers with her, her girlfriend and she washed her hands, but her girlfriend didn't. So hours later they go to fuck after eating dinner 
And she starts fingering her and she's like, wait, why does this hurt? Like I'm, I'm turned no. on. She fucks her with the jalapeno no! fingers. So for the rest of, you know, our friendship, I called her jalapeno pussy. Jalapeno pussy. You got that popping pussy either way. You really <laughs> do. Poppers. That shit was fire. If you know <laughs> what I mean. Have you, I've done that by accident, like something spicy. And I touched my vagina and I was like burning. It's my nightmare. It is, it's not fun. It's not. I'll give somebody a hundred dollars to stick a jalapeno up their pussy. <laughs> I'll take that bet. <laughs> Will you? No. I feel like I need to pay rent. <laughs> Spicy gringo. The act of stuffing a woman's rear end with a volcano taco from Taco Bell and then eating it. Kyle has a sombrero and a fake mustache in his closet. If ever someone decides to meet the spicy gringo. That's disgusting. Kyle, stay the fuck out of my house. <laughs> What's up with Kyle's doing fucked up shit? That's like a dude. Honestly, and if he came, it'd probably be just as spicy from all the monster he drinks. Oh my God. Imagine your cervix getting spicy. Stop it. And then the kid comes out and he's like, I love jalapenos. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh gosh. <laughs> I saw Let's- that name. The Mexican <laughs> plunger. <laughs> what the fuck is a Nigerian hurricane? No. A bunch of Nigerian <laughs> men just spinning around with their dicks like a I helicopter. Was I was literally thinking like you're was spun around on a thing and they just stand out with their hard cocks and they just hit, hit you, you in, the, in face. the face like a fucking those wheels that turn. <laughs> oh, you sweet, innocent soul. If only that's what it was. <laughs> a Nigerian hurricane is a sexual act in which a man poops, put in, puts it in a blender and then proceeds to rub his body with it. After this, the man must quickly jump on his sex partner, attempting to cover them and as much of the feces as he can while also using anal penetration. Why is this called a Nigerian hurricane? That's a It's little, giving racism. It's giving racism, okay? Anyone of any ethnicity can shit on themselves <laughs> and, and cover and them. can cover themselves, okay? It's not just for Nigerians, okay? Yeah, it's everyone. I'm going to start locking my door so you can't come in and like fucking hurricane me. <gasps> a great segment. That was... I'm scarred. I'm so sorry for <laughs> everyone who started the podcast off like that. <sighs> I think it needed to be done. We had to, you know, bring some lightness into yeah, it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my God. Can we talk about fucking Leonardo DiCaprio? The DiCaprio curse. He just broke up with another girlfriend. She just turned 25. Wait, stop. Yeah. He He has like a... A frame from 21 to 25, you can get it. After 25, you can't go near Leo. Why would you want to go near Leo? I wouldn't. Knowing <laughs> that, like, if you are that powerful and that successful and, like, have that much money and you need to date just younger women, and it's, like, to the point where it's, like, I understand meeting somebody who's younger, you know, and you're, like, I like them. It's okay yeah. that they're younger. That's different. But like being like, I want the impressional, impressionable and vulnerable, <laughs> you know? 25? Mm-mm. Too old. Too old. Too old. So like he'll never get married. He'll just date people till they're 25 and then he just cycles through all of those women and he just gets older and older and saggier. Yes. How old is he now? He's I, an old man. He's like 45? He looks way older. He than looks that. way older. <laughs> okay, we're good. No. But he can't... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's sad because Leonardo DiCaprio won't touch her because she's 28. It's okay, babe. I'm 24. He won't like me if for I much get longer. Vaginal rejuvenation. She's 25, Leo. He's like, nope. It's too old. I want 24 and three quarters. No, is there a difference between 24 year old pussy and 28 year old pussy? I don't think so. Let's go ask Leo. Well, I mean, I think my pussy looks better now at 28. Like I'm aging like fine wine. I honestly. Haven't looked down there in a little bit, but I assume she looks the same. Not much has changed. I straight up did like a legs open in the mirror video today. And I was like, my Yoni. I'm like, you're beautiful. I started doing affirmations. I was like, you are such a pretty pussy. You have the prettiest. I have the prettiest pussy. I was doing affirmations. I have the prettiest pussy. She is wet, wild, and free. (laughs) I do affirmations for my car, but it's like, Pearl, you got me this far. 
you're going to keep going for another 10 years. Yeah. Your windshield wipers do not need to be replaced. Oh, no. I'm uh, just putting it out into the universe that my car is totally fine and that my check engine light will turn off tomorrow. <laughs> Tune in next week to see if that worked. What if humans had, like, check engine lights? I and, feel like, like I do. Like on, I, I think we do, too, but it doesn't show to the world. But, like, it would be helpful if you could see somebody just, like, walking around and it's just, like, check engine. No, see, my check engine light was on a couple months ago when my eye wouldn't stop twitching. Oh! That was my check engine light. It lasted, like, two months and then it just went away. Yeah, she got came inside her eye and then something happened. And something she, happened. And he, she's just been like this ever since. <laughs> he fucking Nigerian hurricaned me Stop and Stop it. Stop. I've never been the same since. <laughs> the storm cleared up. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of beautiful out. It's kind of nice. I kind of want to nap. <sighs> but, you so know. the the storm makes you want to nap and the niceness makes you want to nap. I just think I want to nap. I my, just think the world would be happier my, if everybody napped. Yeah. I honestly, I think like how Miami people live and Spanish people, like you wake up, you do your day, you take a, like a big nap in the afternoon, even at night, and then you get up and you go out. And so it's like you sleep four hours and you have your day and then you sleep another four hours and then you go out and it's just like Albert Einstein's cycle. He has a menstrual cycle? <laughs> Yes, Albert Einstein actually was a woman, and he I shouldn't sh- have he free bled. He free bled. He looks like he would free bleed. <laughs> he would be a free bleeder. Sometimes I free bleed. I feel like after day six, I'm just like I don't have a period anymore. Yeah, it's and then not if real. it gets on my clothes, which it does, and then I just throw those away. Yeah, <sighs> uh, I've been doing like um, a heavy metal cleanse. And I can't tell if it's because I'm ovulating and I, or whatever, but the last month with my period, it took me out, like no energy for the whole cycle. Like not just like the week before my period, which is typically the lowest energy. And I, I feel like I have had crackhead energy and I don't know if it's from the heavy metal cleanse or if it's the placebo effect. Cause my pussy, my, not my pussy, my period took me out. This week. Heavily. Heavily. I was dead. Still alive, but I'm barely breathing. (laughs) I put a tampon in and I'm still Maybe we should have gotten high. Because I will free bleed on your couch, yeah. So don't suppress my rights. (laughs) Yeah. I think my favorite thing to do is to free bleed in boyfriend's clothes. Because then it's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> my uterus, my problem. Your clothes, your problem. Oh, man. That's what I say. If I bleed in your clothes, I'm not dealing with it. Okay, so uh, were you spanked as a kid? No. No? Were you? Yeah. I was not spanked. I was never spanked as a child. Were you, did you get soap in your mouth? Uh, No. Okay. She rubbed moldy strawberry, or she made me rub moldy strawberries on myself, but no soap. <laughs> no soap I don't know how to not laugh at your drama <laughs> <laughs> you just said it so casually you're like no soap just moldy strawberries <laughs> that I'm allergic to <laughs> you know <laughs> you win some you lose some yeah no I was definitely spanked as a kid and now I like it I wasn't and now I like it so you know trauma <laughs> so the next OnlyFans video we do, I'm just going to bring home all these strawberries and be like, Emily, <laughs> then I'm going to, I'll soap you and then I'll spank yeah, you. I'll be like, call me mommy. <laughs> Mommy's here, Emily. <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, I disown you. Yeah. Fuck you. I feel Cause that. she disowned me last time. So I feel like it's only fair I do it to her. Yeah. Mine was disowned a long time ago. She's so sweating in her boots. We'll switch back and forth. Oh wow. Two girls, one plant started a live video. Guys, you know how I got that notification? Because I follow Two Girls, One Blunt. On pod. Instagram. On Instagram. Have you live, live, living, living Livin'? us? <laughs> Loved <laughs> us? How do I say? Past. Well, lived. Lived. Live. I lived back then. No, not lived. <laughs> What are you left? Have you left a five-star written review? Emily, what? (laughs) What the hell? I thought 
we were talking about leaving and you were like, wait, about living, living. And I'm like, leaving. And you're like, (laughs) you ever been so high that you like can't remember? What did I forget the name of the other day? And you were like, Emily, what the fuck? I was high. I was asking because we had a pool party the other day. I was asking for a pool floaty like pump or like a balloon pump. And yeah. so I, I messaged the group chat and I was like, does anybody have a pool floaty blower upper? And Jamie was like, a blower upper? A blower upper. I knew what you were talking about when you said that. But then I was like, the things that come out of your mouth sometimes, even the, I guess that come out of my mouth. The math is not mathing. The math is ma- not mathing. The vocab is not vocabularying. So what do you what do you sometimes say that you're like, what? Um, most things. <laughs> A lot of things that come out of my mouth. Yeah, like, for oh, sure. I retracted that back in. Yeah. If you had an imaginary fishing rod <laughs> okay. and that fishing rod could snatch back a sentence, any sentence, you just reel it back in. That I said? That you've said that keeps you up at like 3 a.m. <laughs> Yo, I'm just speaking my truth, man. Like, I'm just, I was thinking about that and I'm like, what's the biggest lie you've ever told? And I'm like, I'm just living my truth. You've never told a big lie. I think the biggest lies I've told are, have been to keep me safe. Oh, like to my mom, you know what I mean? Or on like a resume or like, you know, when in a sales negotiation, when you know that they're lying to you and negotiating. Yeah. So it's like, yo, you're not outsmarting me, but I'm not like a liar in like general. Oh no. Um, neither am I. I, um, I lied once. Because me and my best friend used to drive, I used to drive her to work every day. So we once decided as we were pulling into the work parking lot that we didn't want to go to work that day. So we said that we were in a car accident and we, <laughs> oh. we called and we were like, we just got hit. Like, and because we're both together, we both just got hit. We have to be checked out. And we kept this lie up for probably like 45 minutes, an hour. <laughs> we were not in a car accident. We were driving around around the blue hills behind Boston, just like vibing and smoking. And we were like, but we do not want to fucking go in. And, um, they were calling, they were like, are you guys okay? We're like, yeah, we have to be checked out by the ambulance. Like the police are coming. We were just getting further and further in our lie to the point where we told them that we got rear ended. We pulled my car over, proceeded to back my car into stuff to try to make a dent in my car. Oh, my God. friend had steel toed shoe boots and she kicked my car. Nothing would dent this motherfucker. Is this, is this the one you have now? This is Pearl. Pearl? She's oh, a solid bitch. She's a solid girl. <laughs> but we really went the extra mile to try to make our lie real. And then we ended up going to work anyways. Like we didn't even take advantage of it. We just went an hour late. Holy shit. Like how boring is that? If you're going to lie, like go skydiving. Yeah. Do something. For sure. (laughs) No, we just got donkeys. Uh, Did they ever find out? They probably fucking knew. We were the shitheads. Like we would just have fun. The kids loved us. Like nobody really cared, but we were always like causing I feel like if you don't lie to get out of work, then you, you know, you're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. If you think it's wrong to lie to get out of work, you are not the kind of person I want in my life. How many times did my grandma die over the course of my work history? <laughs> Probably five. Nana. All right. So you. sorry, Nana. <laughs> uh, yeah. My <laughs> p- grandparents have been dead. I would use that now. Yeah. It's not like that person's listening to the podcast. <laughs> no, just our grandparents are listening like, you son of a bitch. You're going to fucking use me again? Yeah, Nana Peg's up there and she's like, I got you. Nana Peg used to hide my write-ups in middle school when I oh, got in trouble. You best real believe one. she's like, I fake a death. Fake me breaking my hip. Whatever you need, Jamie Lee. Oh, breaking your hip. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I, I've had bosses not believe me when I'm telling the truth, though. So it's just like, why the fuck not lie? They're not going to believe you. Yeah. You got to gaslight the gaslighter sometimes. If your boss is abusing you. We are team gaslighting. Team gaslighting. No, gaslighting, (laughs) gaslighting abusers. Abusers in any situation. Abusers of, abusers of power, you know? Yes. If your boss sucks, 
lie to him, <laughs> gaslight him, and make him question his reality. I used to tell him that I was going on vacation a day before I had planned on going vacation, and I just never told him. Because he wouldn't listen when I tried to give him an advance notice. So I stopped giving him notice. And I was just like the day before, hey, I'm going to Mexico. Yeah. He was like, you you didn't tell me this. I'm like, no, I told you like months ago. I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, that's a good one. I enjoyed no, I, Mexico. I just told you. And yeah, you gaslight them. And you were like, we talked about that in your room. You remember? <laughs> and then so-and-so came in and she handed you the paper. She was talking about like this month's projections. You signed off on it. Yeah. You got to go really deep. Yeah. Not too deep where they can tell. Or where you But forget. enough detail, but that like makes them wonder. Like, they're like, wait, did that happen? Did your, <laughs> did your parents tell you how to lie growing up? Uh, my mom always told me lying was bad. She was like, don't lie to me. And I never lied. I never lied to my mom. Mm. And then once like my mom started getting crazy, I would lie. She'd yeah. be like, oh, is there a parent there? And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> and the days that I did lie, I don't know how she found out, but my mom would literally show up. I'd be at a friend's house and she'd be like, their parents aren't home. And she'd show up and knock on their door banging. Like we'd have to come out. Oh. She'd be like, open the door. I know you're in there, Jamie Lee, and you're fucking lying and there's boys in there. And... uh Sometimes she was wrong, but sometimes she was right. And you just, you know what? Honestly, I think she was just crazy. <laughs> she, <Shout> just, <laughs> she would just show up whenever and odds are that sometimes she's going to be correct. Yeah. No, I, you know what? Which it's perpetuates the cycle of abuse. <laughs> it really does. We it love really that. Does. Do we? No. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, uh, I think has like a thing against authority. Like he really doesn't like it. And I think he's passed that on to me. Um, Same. So he used to like tell me how to lie to like bosses or school. So oh. I'd be late to school and he'd be like, okay, you have to give them a little bit of the truth, but not enough of the truth where like you are going to fumble over yourself and not know what you're talking about. And he would literally like detail how I should lie about like, being in the hospital or like what auto body part I should say I need replacing because that's why I'm late for work. He's like, well, if you say your brakes failed, that's a six hour job. You should say that you need your lights replaced because that's only 30 minutes and then it'll cover the time. Like he went in and somehow he was teaching you how to make sales deals. He just taught you how to be a salesperson, Emily. And honestly, thank you, Benjamin. I, I appreciate that. And now he's dead. Is he? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But, uh, Dude, my mom, yeah, my mom would be like, lie to the police. <coughs> like she would always be like, never tell the police the truth. Never talk to them in general. But if yes. you do, just lie. I deny, deny, deny till you die. So she's like, she would always tell me this because she would drink and drive. And she would be like, sometimes I'm, I have a couple of drinks. And if I get pulled over, all I do is I roll my window down this much because that's all they need. And like, she would just teach me kind of how to get away with things. Mm -hmm. Just like how I got bullied by a fat girl. And then she was like, and I wouldn't call someone fat, like I said, if they were nice, but she sucked. My mom taught me how to take her down. She's like, this is how you fight a, a girl who's bigger than you. Yeah. And you tackle her and you grab her by the bottom of her like legs and you pull up. And then she goes and then punch her in the face. So she would just, yeah, our parents would just teach us things to get by in life. And honestly, I say it's street smarts. I say that was valuable information. Thank you, Ben, for teaching me how to kick dudes in the balls. <laughs> I will be using that in the future. On OnlyFans. <laughs> you okay. can pay me for a session. Oh. Would you ever kick a guy in the balls for money? Yeah. How much money? I'll do it tonight for 10 bucks. <laughs> All right. The guy that's coming over, we'll ask him. Do you want to get kicked in the balls for $10? <laughs> you have to pay me and you have to get kicked in the balls. It seems like a great deal. So you would really meet a stranger though. Think about the implications of that. You're just like, like uh, you don't know who it is. It could be your teacher. It could be your uncle. <laughs> Peter? P Peter? <laughs> <sighs> okay so like I'm like meeting somebody online and they're just like asking me to meet them in person and kick their balls yeah, yeah. oh see that would be very expensive but if I'm just like okay so how much I'd say 4k four thousand dollars to yeah. kick someone in the balls and meet yeah. up but if I meet you organically outside at like a bar and you're like hey kick me in the balls for 10 bucks I'd that's, do it that's true what did you get paid for at SLS 
500 oh, bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. To uh, let somebody smack my ass a couple of times. And he paid her $500 cash. cash and money. then Emily put it in her bikini and then swam like the little swimmer fish she, she is. And she lost all the money. You know <laughs> I just, I think, I hope that it went to somebody who needed it that day because I didn't need it, clearly. Yeah. All right, so you're not a, you're not a big liar, but no. our parents definitely told us some fuck shit in yeah. the pursuit of raising us as God-fearing, law-abiding <laughs> citizens. Look how we fucking turned out. Look at us now. Dun, dun, dun. I could conquer a nation. I fear nobody but my own butthole. I fear mine too, because I think I need to get it checked out by a doctor. Jamie has two buttholes, guys. Um, <laughs> she has not one. No, it's two. like, you know, when your butthole winks, I hope this doesn't, you know, for an Instagram. I live. actually don't know how my butthole winks. Like sometimes it like indents above it. <laughs> I think you just had and a second I have butthole. Two all seeing eyes. No, it's not. It's, it's skin there. If I flex it, if I push it out, Jamie, you shit yourself a new sphincter. <gasps> oh, oh man. okay. We're taking Jamie to a gastroenterologist. Honestly, I, yeah. I, I don't even know if that's the right doctor. Yeah. Like, do I have to get butthole surgery? <laughs> like what? <laughs> that would be funny. I'll pick you up from butthole surgery. Thank you. Would you pick me up if I had to get, no, I would leave you. Or I would film it the whole time. See, that's my fear is <laughs> I have to get my wisdom teeth out very soon. Oh, it's on. There's going to be so many videos of Emily getting her wisdom teeth out high on drugs. But no, but I, they didn't give me the laughing gas when I took it. Oh, I think they just knocked me out. Oh. I was out. I told them to knock me. I don't want to hear any of it. Teeth coming out of your mouth sounds like you're uprooting a tree and it's no. <laughs> You're like, no, thank you. No, thank you. I had to take Xanax hardcore when I got my teeth removed. Okay. I just ate a bunch of Tic Tacs. I love Tic Tacs. <sighs> Jamie. <laughs> Emily. If you had to fight 15 sheep, what strategy would you use? I'll let you finish your Tic Tacs. <laughs> you got a little time to think about it, you know? Okay. I got 15 sheep. They're angry. They're looking at me. I'm by myself in a field with nothing but my clothes and my cell phone. So what do I do? I know that the sheep are coming at me, but they're fluffy. Yes. So I <laughs> go on YouTube. I search sheep mating calls and I do it and I make all of them. Then I get on the ground on all fours and I go, Bah, as I shake my little sheep pussy in the air and You're I, make, a sheep? <laughs> I turn these sheep on, I can, I, it's kind of like I'm confusing them. So I, I turn You're their confusing anger me, so. into sexual whatever. And then I, when one of them comes near, I hop on and then I ride it into the sunset, not sexually, <laughs> but on the back. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And I run away from all of the sheep. That's what I do. Okay. What do you do, Emily? I think I just run. I don't think sheep are very fast. <laughs> um, and I also don't think sheep can fight. So I would probably just stand in the circle and then like just punch them out as they come to me. No, they ram you and they ram you kind of. I'm not scared of no fucking sheep. Don't sheep have horns sometimes? I'm pretty sure sheep have big horns, dude. All I'm thinking is getting, even if they come at you and with their big horns. I'm not scared of fucking sheeps. If animals became intelligent and started talking, how many people would still eat them? I'm honestly, <laughs> I don't imagine like your, your chicken being like, hi, Jamie. Stop. I like you. You're so nice. And then you chop its head off. Emily, no, I don't think we would. Thanksgiving turkey, you know how they have their presidential well, because, pardon? Yeah. Imagine the two turkeys fucking pitching their life to the president of the United States. <laughs> Please, Please, Joe, <laughs> we can do it. You don't have to kill me, Joe. 2024. I'll vote for you. What Would they be able to vote? No, because they're not considered a human. Like they're not considered a person with... Do animals have rights? <laughs> Are we going to like learn how animals can talk and then they have to be given rights and then they, they vote? 
I think that's what happened because like we would, they would have personalities and once they have personalities, it takes one, you, you win them over oh, and then the good so personalities easy. start winning us over. And if they're like pets and stuff, I don't know. Oh. But then if they started talking, then we would know what dolphins were thinking when they raped us. Oh, did we, did we already talk about the woman who raped a dolphin? I think we did. God damn it. Or got, got assaulted by a dolphin. No, no. She raped the dolphin. Oh, I don't know if we talked they about that. They were doing that. LSD clinical trials on dolphins back in like the 70s. Oh, yeah. And she raped him. She raped Peter. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens to someone named Peter. <laughs> Was a dolphin named Peter? Yeah. Yeah, that's... If you could give a dolphin <laughs> a name, would you name it fucking Peter? I don't know what I would name my dolphin. Something majestic. Yeah, like Luna. Yeah, that's beautiful. Luna the dolphin. That's really cute. I always question like free Willy because who the fuck would name an orca Willy? That man, that grown orca is the is most- Willy? That reminds me of a flaccid penis. Right? That is a fearsome predator and you're going to call him Willy? <laughs> <laughs> that's like Mufasa, you know, something. <clears throat> yeah. So would you be able to eat animals if they spoke to you? No. You'd have to stop. No, or I would just be, I would just, you know, do what most white people do when they see racism happening. Turn the other cheek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have to eat this salmon. I would literally, I would make somebody else. I would just be like, I didn't do it. He did it. Oh. I'm just in the same room. I have a friend, cat. I can't be speciesist if I have a cat, right? Right. Oh, then they have rights and oh my goodness. Oh, they is... start going to war. The bears oh, have we'd their be own fucked. town. I just watched a TV show about this and guys, if animals become sentient, we're fucked. I, we're what screwed. about bugs? Oh, we're even more fucked because they can get in where we can't even control you know that, them. You know that bugs are growing. They're getting bigger in size because the planet's temperature is rising. That makes them get bigger. What would you rather a zombie apocalypse or like a giant bug apocalypse? So Zombie. like <laughs> zombies, zombies, hand down. I do uh, any of the scary movies. I was, we were watching resident evil and there's like giant spiders that no, chase, no, no, no. I would take a field of zombies over some zombie giant monster spider bug thing. Cause with zombies, we know the lore go for the brain we're done for, you know, you can yeah. kill zombies. We'll figure it out. Yeah. With bugs, we're fucked. We're completely screwed. There's no chance for humanity. There's none. We might as well just lay down and put our asses in the air and get ready for <laughs> like, the royal fucking. Like the mist. Isn't that like that movie where there's giant bugs and he like kills his family in the car and then all of a sudden the mist clears and then they're fine and he had just killed everyone because they were like, how are we going to live in this? Giant bugs are taking over. So he killed them all. That's the ending of the movie. I just ruined it for you. We should watch it. It's, it's fucked. That's so sad. It's so sad. He's like, I'll do, I'll be the last one. Yeah. <laughs> and then the fog immediately clears. Damn. Do you but, know how pissed I'd be? Oh, I, I'd kill myself. Yeah. And and <laughs> there's nothing more for me. No. No. Damn. I think a lot about like what would happen if I was stuck in like the plot of a horror film. And I, I think I'd be one of those bitches that dies first screaming, like, because I see the murderer and then I start screaming and then he kills me right away. Cause he knows where I am. Yeah. I think about that. And for a lot of things, Emily, I think would be the first to go. <laughs> and is that, a, we'd be a mercy kill. If you really think about it. Yeah. Just Kill We'd us, be get within it over the with. first five minutes. <laughs> first five minutes. We wouldn't even make it like two weeks. We wouldn't even be on like the credit roll. I wouldn't be role. able to leave the cats. I, I, we say we would, but imagine they'd be so scared by themselves. <laughs> I have been so horny. <laughs> I have been, I've been flirting guys. I think, I don't know. I, I definitely have walls up. Oh yeah. And I haven't been able to talk to guys because I'm just like not interested in anyone. And I think cause the walls are up or just like my standards are high now and I'm like having boundaries and I'm like, I notice red flags. I'm just like hating everyone I come in contact with. You know what I mean? I just see how I already see the problems, like what will not work. And so it's hard for me to flirt because I'm like, I don't want to lead anyone on if I don't like them. 
<sighs> but Patty's been teaching me that it's okay to flirt and like all this stuff. So I started flirting. And then, you know, what my flirting turned into sexting. My flirting turned into sexting. That was quick. And I didn't even realize how horny I was because I was sexting somebody for like two weeks straight on Instagram. It's like you let your walls down once and then like all the walls are gone and you're just like, okay, let's fuck. That's why I have to have so many walls up. There's no in between. (laughs) No, but I'm literally unwell. I'm a cat in heat and I'm talking to like some people and... And I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm I'm either going to go from being celibate or to having a full blown roster. Why not? And I'm like, why I think sometimes with the celibacy stuff, it's, there's an issue with like purity culture. And I'm like, am I a bad person because I'm having sex or am I getting negative energy? Like all this soul tie shit that's going around. Like you're going to absorb all the next energy, like people's energy. Like that's true. But also like you have a power over like yourself and your energy field. I think I'm celibate more so just because I fall in love after I have sex (laughs) and I just still don't know how to separate those two things. So when I do have sex, it will be interesting to see how that works. I just feel like I've, everyone I've fucked, whenever I'm fucking them, like bad shit doesn't, bad shit happens or like good shit doesn't happen as fast as it does when I'm single and not fucking. I mean, definitely it's so much energy to be put into flirting with people or finding somebody you're interested in and yeah. all of that could be going towards you. But then it's also fun to do all that stuff and it gives your brain a little break. So why not do it? So thoughts on fucking another comic. <laughs> I literally am a chuckle fuck, so I, I don't understand the issue. You're a chuckle fuck, but you haven't done stand up yet. I have not. And I'm going to be like, a chuckle and fuck what till if you, I die. When you're in it and there's like politics. Subtle art of not giving a fuck. That's true. So just fuck everyone. <laughs> fuck them all. Fuck, fuck them all. Not uh, holding my pussy anymore. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. My puss, my legs are as open as the door. <laughs> <laughs> the door is closed. <laughs> <laughs> and so are my legs. <laughs> oh, God. I, I just like, do I do it? I think I just, yeah. Do I get my pussy in? I deserve to have my pussy licked. But what if they're bad? I, there's That's so many so things. Uh, I just want it. And then I'm like, oh, I'm ovulating. If I'm not ovulating anymore, will I still want to fuck them? Which I did tell them. I was like, both people, I was like, I'm just ovulating and I'm horny. So I'm going to be, I'm going to hit on you and be annoying. Give it a week, see how it happens. And then why not? Fuck. Yeah. I'm just scared that I haven't had sex in so long that I don't know how to have sex anymore or I've forgotten what to do with my body parts and how they go together. You were saying that and then I'm like, Emily, give me your blowjob eyes. And she's like, <laughs> and she like that was a terrible description, but she's <laughs> like, she does these. And then you stick your butt out and I'm like, Emily, you'll be just fine. <laughs> I'll be just fine as long as saw, they just I like turn me sec- over and fuck me. Yeah. Take it for a little, be a pr- pillow princess for like the first part. And then, and then you'll be like, I want it. Emily almost flew out to another state to see a sugar daddy. He was really hot. And we were, we FaceTimed twice and somehow got very sexual, just like you, because the walls were down. And then I was like, I'm horny, but also I was ovulating too. (laughs) So (laughs) my body was literally like, put a baby in me. And like, I'm 28. So my body actually is saying that. (laughs) I think my body is saying that too. I'm like, you have a good personality. I want you to be the father of my children. Literally. That's that's all I need. If if we can laugh together, then we're good. We can fuck together. (laughs) If we can laugh, we can fuck. And if we can laugh together, we can come together. Yeah, we can. And if we can't, we can't. And that's why we're chuckle fucks. Um, There's so many hot comedians. You haven't fucked a comedian. I haven't. I haven't fucked anybody. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. DM us like topics and things that you want to talk about. We want to get you involved. I know. If you guys have any issues going on in your life, let's let's hear about it. Because a lot of you listen to us and and where where's the engagement? We want to talk about stuff that's not just our problems. We want to talk about your problems because, you know. What do we do? What if we did a give a giveaway? We should. I think I think we should do a 10K giveaway. We're almost at 7K. Oh shit. T- We're gonna do a 10K giveaway with a bunch of like weed paraphernalia and bongs and 
and cool shit. So much shit. So follow us on Instagram so you can stay tuned. I'll pay someone's fucking rent for the month. There we go. <laughs> there up, we go. Up to seven, uh, up to six hundred dollars. <laughs> I forget that people have rent that cheap. I know. I was like, what is rent? I was like, wait a second. We got to put some. Is parameters. rent that cheap anymore? Five hundred dollars towards someone's rent. <laughs> Do they have to like cl- like classify that as income? I don't know. We'll figure that out for you, maybe. But uh, stay tuned for the next episode. We DM some ho- guests that are coming through Miami. Hopefully, we get them on the pod. They haven't answered, so that's totally fine. But if we meet them, it might be a last minute thing. But they would be big guests. Hell yeah! So stay tuned. Stay tuned. We love you, filthy fucking stoners. We're going to actually get high now. Yay. All right. Bye, bitches. Bye.